So in this video, I'm going to attempt to answer the question, why don't you include weight in some free body diagrams that you draw for vibration? So there's a short answer and a long answer. So the short answer is that weight is going to cancel from the equation as long as you measure displacement from the system's equilibrium position. So the key here is that you're measuring displacement from equilibrium. In that case, and only that case, you see weight cancel from the equation, so there's no point including it then in the free body diagram. However, if you measure from any other position, it's going to be important to include it. So, I'm going to go through the long answer now, which is actually doing an example where we can demonstrate this cancelling effect when we measure from the system's equilibrium position. So to start off with, what I've got here is some wall, and I've got a spring hanging off it, and there's nothing attached to the bottom of it. So the spring here is at its free length or natural length, so it's not extended or contracted. Now what I've done to that spring now is I've attached onto it a mass that we can see here at the bottom, and that's caused the spring to extend a little bit. However, once I've, I've put it on and given it some time, it should naturally kind of find a new um, position that it's going to stay in. So once it's found that new natural position, that's going to actually be its equilibrium position. Cool. So let's go ahead and put some labels on some important points. So the first one to think about is what happens when I measure from the free length of the spring. So I'm going to measure it downwards as being the positive direction and I'm going to call it Y. So that's going to measure the position of the end of the spring um, that would potentially move back and forth up and down. So we're going to also look at what happens when we measure from this point here, all right, which is the end of the spring but from its equilibrium position. So I'm going to call that one X. And then what we know is that there is a difference between Y and X. And what this is going to be equivalent to is the distance that our spring gets displaced as a result of this mass being added. So I'm going to call it, I'll pop it in here, all right, this is lowercase delta. And what this represents is the static displacement of our um, mass as a result, sorry, static displacement of our spring as a result of this mass just being added. Now we can actually develop quite a simple relationship between these three um, properties that we've popped in. So what I can actually say is that y, okay, the displacement measured from the free length, is equal to whatever the static displacement is, plus, all right, then it brings us to x, okay, so y is equal to delta plus x to relate those key points uh, together. So what I'm going to try and do now is develop myself a differential equation which is able to describe the motion of this block first in terms of y, all right, so referencing the free length of the spring, and then secondly I'm going to see what happens when I try and convert it over into x, which represents measuring from the equilibrium position, which is what we know um, special things happen with. So to start off, let's isolate our um, mass and draw the free body diagram of it in terms of y. Okay, so looking at this here. So let's assume that I pull down this mass, okay, that's going to result in it accelerating in this direction. And I would suggest that the acceleration of it, referencing back to y, would just be, I'm going to dot this in, my double dot for the mass times acceleration of the block. Um, and yeah, the acceleration measured from y is just going to be whatever rate this um, point on the end accelerates at. So as a result of this accelerating downwards, what I would expect is that uh, the spring is going to try and uh, reverse that or oppose that. So that means that the spring is going to try and pull it back up and we're going to call that ky, all right, for k for the spring constant, all right, and y for the amount that it's been displaced. So if this pulls down a certain distance, all right, the spring is going to um, end up extending that distance y. Now the other thing I need to include is the mass, okay, because we know that it's got a weight associated with it, which is going to act downwards, and it's going to be through the center of gravity. So I'll pop that in here. That's going to be mg. 
So now what we want to do is figure out the equation of motion that describes it. So I'm going to assume that the upward direction is the positive direction. So when we sum forces in the y direction to be mass times acceleration in y, ky, um, we can see that vector is pointing upwards in the positive direction, so it's going to be positive in the equation. mg is pointing downwards, so that's going to be a negative. And I've dotted this one in because it relates to the right-hand side of the equation. It's the mass times acceleration um, part of it. And we can see that this is pointing down, so it's going to be negative my um, double dash. Now I'm going to do a little bit of rearranging for this equation. So if I shift this to the left-hand side, it's going to go positive. And I have my ky. And at the same time, I'm going to shift to the other side, so it's going to go positive. So we end up with my double dash plus ky is equal to mg. So what we're going to have a look at now is what happens if we change our reference um, to be x, all right, measuring from the equilibrium position rather than from y, which was the free length, so just a kind of arbitrary um, other position. So in order to do that, we can start off by considering this equation we developed that related x and y. So we know that y is equal to the static displacement plus the x value. So what we can do is look down here and we can see that that can directly replace y, which is good. But we also need to replace y double dash. And how we can get that is by taking the derivative of this equation twice. So if we take the derivative a first time, all right, this is with respect to time we're taking it. So the derivative of y with respect to time is dy dt, or I'm going to write it as y dash. All right, um, the static displacement here is just going to be a constant value, all right, and we'll look at calculating it in a moment, but the static displacement is never going to change. So as a result, when you take the derivative of a constant, we know that it goes to zero. So the derivative here is zero. And x, all right, that's a, a quantity that's capable of changing. It's going to track the displacement of our mass. So if it's capable of changing over time when we take its derivative, it's going to go to dx dt, which I can also equivalently write as x dash. So we end up with y dash is equal to x dash. So whatever the velocity is referenced from this point, it's the same as the velocity referenced from the other point. So if we do this a second time to take a second derivative, right, the derivative of y dash with respect to time is going to be y double dash. And same thing here, the derivative of x with respect to, oh, sorry, derivative of x dash with respect to time is going to end up being x double dash. So we can use this and this to replace in our equation here. So we're going to end up with, with mx double dash plus k, which is fine. And then we're going to replace y with um, our static displacement plus x. And on the other side of the equation, there's not much to do. It's just equal to mg. Now I'm going to go to the effort at this point of just expanding out these brackets. So we're going to get k times the static displacement plus k times x is equal to mg. Now if we remember back to the short answer, what we were looking for is the weight to cancel out from the equation when we measure from the system's equilibrium position. So if we look down here, we've still got weight in the equation and we're hopefully going to be able to cancel it out by substituting out this k times delta a component. All right, and in order to do that, we need to consider what happens uh, when we're at the static um, displacement point or rather I should probably say what happens when we are at um, equilibrium, static equilibrium. So let's come over here, um, down the bottom. All right, so I'm gonna write here, consider static equilibrium. So static equilibrium means that nothing is moving in this position. So it's like up here when I said we just um, add on our mass and wait for it to be still, okay? So when we're considering the static equilibrium and nothing's moving, it means that y dash, all right, so that's going to be our, our velocity, and y double dash, which is our acceleration, have to be equal to zero because, again, nothing is moving. The other thing that we can do is if we're considering um, our equilibrium position and we're measuring from y, 
what we can see is that the displacement y is directly equal to this static equilibrium. Surprise, surprise. So what we can see it say, sorry, is at that point, y is equal to delta. So what I'm going to do is substitute this information back up into my uh, equation for um, the system. So I've got my double dash plus ky is equal to mg. So we know that y double dash is equal to zero, which means that this term is going to drop away. I can replace y at this point as being equal to um, delta. And there's not much I can do on the right hand side. Just going to have it is equal to mg. So I could directly solve for what my static displacement would be. It would be mg on k. But actually, I'm just going to leave it like this. And what we can do is sub this back up into our equation over here. So what we're going to find is that mx double dot plus k times um, delta is equal to mg. So we can pop that in plus kx equals mg. So what we end up with is mg on the left, mg on the right. That's our weight term. And you can see it's ended up cancelling from the equation. So what this is simplified down to is now mx double dash plus kx is equal to zero. And the weight term is no longer kind of appearing directly in the equation. So let me just go back then and let's pretend that we draw our free body diagram referencing from x from the very beginning. So I'll do it over here. So we want to draw our free body diagram isolating the mass. So let's assume that it's going to um, accelerate downwards again. So that means our mass times acceleration uh, vector should point downwards. And since we're writing it in terms of x this time, it's going to be the mass times acceleration referenced at that x point. So since we're um, expecting our block to move downwards, there's going to be an opposing force that pulls it back up to bring it to back to where it was from the spring. So that's going to point upwards and it's going to be kx since we're writing it in terms of x this time. All right, and if we pop back to our picture, again, if that mass moves down a certain distance, all right, this x distance, it's going to result in the spring developing a force back up of k times whatever that x distance was. Now, I'm not going to put my um, weight term on the uh, free body diagram this time because I'm measuring from the equilibrium position, all right, that's what x is, and it should then, as a result, follow the short answer thing where weight automatically is going to cancel from the equation, so we don't really need to think about it directly. So if I now jump ahead and actually sum my forces to be equal to, to the mass times acceleration, again, I'm going to consider upwards as positive. So we're going to have kx going up, so it's positive in the equation, no other forces. The only other thing I have is this one I've dotted in because it relates to the right hand side of the equation as the mass times acceleration term. Now since it's going downwards, it's going to be a negative and mx double dash. So if I um, just swing this to the other side, I end up with mx double dash plus kx is equal to zero. And we can see that that matches directly against what we had before from doing it this very, very long-handed way, um, considering a relatively arbitrary point um, in the sense of the free length of the spring. Okay, so there is a lesson here. And that's what I've written here. So always measure displacement from the equilibrium position if you have a choice. Now, what that means is that you then don't need to include weight on your free body diagram as it's going to automatically be cancelled out. So that's pretty much it uh, in terms of this video. Um, hopefully after you've seen this you can just remember the short answer which is weight cancels from the equation as long as you measure from the system's equilibrium position um, and you don't need to then prove this over and over again each time you do a question. So that's all there is.